someone who came up with. The Civic Precinct, uh, through a couple of buildings uh, down in Grafton, could create up to 80 units. Uh, the Upper Cove, and this is a, a very long-term piece, 300 to 450 units. And the Village Center, 70 to 120 units. So we're looking at somewhere between 700 and 950 units, depending on how things develop over time, which adds up to roughly 2,000 people. You're not going to be able to read this. This is a roadmap that we've created for Council uh, with some possible uh, initial activities. We've got goals here, how that relates to sustainability, things to consider that might be early things that could be undertaken, and then finally the ultimate actions such as building ferry marshalling, building a civic facility. This is an interesting statistic. I was actually quite encouraged to see this. I don't know if you can read this number. It basically says $24 million. We did an assessment of the surplus lands based on the densities that we've applied to them and a conservative approach based on what developers might pay for that land today. Now, we don't want to sell all this land today, but if we did, based on this plan, including preserving up to seven acres of the surplus lands as park, we could cr create up to $24 million in revenue. Now, I don't know if someone's going to walk in the door and hand us that money. I'm not here to, s to say that that's going to happen. But from a planning and economic analysis, that's the number. So in addition to, to creating what we consider to be a great community plan, and a plan that incorporates a high level of sustainability, it also creates a lot of wealth and revenue for our community, something that we desperately need if we're going to enact some of these. This goes back to the how do we pay for it question. This is one of the ways. So finally, that was the slide I showed you of what Government Road might look like. And the last slide is a slide looking up from the ferry and with a significantly narrowed Government Road with buildings on this side. The buildings on this side of Government Road are an important planning aspect to create the kind of energy and density we need on that street to make commercial more viable. And the increased lawn space in front of the library. There's some more trees as well. Thank you very much. That's it. But I, you know, I just I want to make a comment just before we go there. Um, I don't think we've ever been in this position before in this community. There may be things in, in the presentation that excite you, that make sense. There may be things that don't make sense. There may be things that sort of worry you. All of that said, I don't think this community. Well, I know this community has never had sort of sort of the, the, the thoughtfulness and the analysis, uh, the study. Uh, to essentially explore where we're going. Um, wherever we go, we have a sort of a base uh, right now, which we've never had before, uh, of, of, of options and, and uh, analysis uh, that I, I really want to just say thank you to the planning team. Uh, I mean, this is, uh, in my mind, a bit extraordinary compared to where we thought we were going when we started this process. Uh, and I, uh, I really want to say that it, it strikes me that this has been a wonderful marriage of sort of professional instinct and um, island instinct. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, uh, the uh, biggest worry, I think, when we got into this is that this would be from away. And I, I, I think there's been a real effort in, uh, to consult, uh, and it shows in an effort to sort of understand sort of the island psyche, and I think it shows. So that's just sort of a commentary um, and I think I want to go one step beyond that. And I think where we are right now is, is uh, and sort of a, we're, we're in a discussion. And this really is a base for a discussion. Uh, and, and how we actually move forward on this is, is you know, yet to be decided and, and will be sort of a, a discussion council will have with staff uh, and the community. But I, I think what is important is that um, we, you know, approach this from a point of view that we're, we, we have strengths and we have weaknesses, and we've got to acknowledge that, to my mind, we're not in the place we need to be. As much as we love Snug Cove, there are issues afoot, and I think when we stand back, as you started the conversation and said, when you look at this sort of the greenhouse gas production that we have, 
uh, as, as individuals that we're, we sort of are the producers of. And when we look at sort of the, the, uh, the, the rapid increase in, in costs uh, for the island, or the sort of the housing costs, uh, clearly we, action is required. I mean, doing nothing isn't going to get us uh, toward a solution. And so without sort of prejudicing the discussion, I just, I, I think, we have to sort of approach this with a certain level of confidence and, and, and forwardness. Uh, and that's a sort of an important sort of premise, I think, for the whole discussion. But anyways, I probably spoke too much there. But I just, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I think we are right now in a good place. And it would be the quality of the discussion that moves us from here forward that it really is, is the big determinant. So um, questions, I'd like to sort of Give an opportunity to council first, and then uh, we're opening it up. John, I see your hand. Yeah. Yeah. John, you want to start? Well, uh, is it possible to go back to that to greenhouse gas like for 2010? I, I, I didn't really. Uh, excuse me, I didn't really understand it, and I just thought maybe the one where we're going to get back to the 2000 level. 1.9 tons per person. <coughs> yeah. So, so we get back to 23,400 tons yeah. by reducing the non cold no, this is a combination. It's a strategy that combines. Well, I understand it's a combination, but any combination's got two parts. Yeah. So, how much of that 24,000 is outside the cove in 2010? Well, that I didn't I didn't show that calculation here. No, but I'd like to know what it is because it, it has to be important because I'd like to know how it happens. If we had the if we can account for the population forecast for the for the village in 2010, in comparison to the total population forecasted for the entire island, and we and we look into the, into the total emissions kept at target levels, then we can do that, that calculation. I can I can run the calculation for you if you want it, but uh, I have the, 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 basic, the basic math would be something like seven or eight hundred residents in 2010 in the code times 1.9 times gives you that piece. Major residents say, I don't know, 3,000, 3,300 for the rest of the island times seven tons. Okay. How do you get down to the seven tons when right now we're at 10? I think you said it's a transportation strategy. I don't understand what the linkage is between the development in the cove and the improvement in the rest of the island. And I'd like to know because if the cove plan we're putting forward doesn't fly, it's still very important <coughs> to figure out how we can deal with that. Uh, reduction on the rest of the island, and, and you seem to have just lost over it. No, I mean, and I think you're totally right. The main, the key thing here to understand that a transportation, a thorough sustainable transportation plan, is absolutely required in order to lower the emissions of the island. But what we're assuming, without any changes, we're saying that, I mean, we can say that people living on the in the village will remain somewhat stable in their emissions per capita. So the only way of bringing the emissions per capita down for people living off the village is by implementing a thorough uh, transportation plan. That's basically the assumption. And, and producing more services and more jobs within the code that reduce the need to leave the island or take other transportation. Is so that what you assume? We're assuming some benefit of the cove becoming, as we say, to the rest of the island and reducing the amount of gas. In addition to the fact, you know, I think Correct me if I'm wrong, but there's some assumption that we're going to get greener as we go. I mean, for instance, I'm going to put a wind turbine on my, on my house, you know, so that the rest of the island will be influenced over time. It's not a static number that we should be producing. The seven tons include on-island and off-island transportation? Uh, I understand that's the base for the beginning. Yes, yes. And that's why it's so high in comparison, for example, to Vancouver, where the average, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the average in Vancouver is three tons per capita. No. Even the competition infrastructure that's happening there. But because you're so ferry dependent and you have so much people living off the village, the commuting and transportation dependency is so much higher. And, and did you consider the continued increase in population? I mean, there's a lot of development going on now. You're assuming that we keep developing the rural development that we've got. 
uh, well, we sort of within 